And we're back. See, that wasn't so long, was it? And, you know, we couldn't just leave Celeste at that one run. We, we had to get some more in here. And we are doing the Spring Collab Beginner Lobby. I have no idea what that is, <laughs> but somebody here does know what that is. That, of course, is our runner, Frozen Flygon. What is this? <laughs> yeah, so uh, if you don't know, Celeste is a very active modding scene. I've made a map of my own. There are plenty of people who speed run and play and make custom maps, as we call them in our community. And so the Spring Collab 2020 is one of the most downloaded, largest collabs of all time that was made in the Celeste community. And so it basically, people came together, submitted maps, and they got put together by difficulty. So you can see we have the beginner lobby, which is what we're gonna be speedrunning today. We also have intermediate, advanced expert, and grand master, which is kind of the upper echelon of difficulty in terms of how we categorize custom maps. And so I wanted to showcase this for Accessibility Day because this is actually a great learning tool for people who are looking to get better at the game, to play more advanced maps, and to learn Celeste tech. So, for example, just jumping into the beginner lobby, they makers of this mod put in an amazing tool called the gyms. So there's the beginner gym, and it teaches you like different tech that you're going to need throughout the lobby, which is really cool. So here we go. We got we got dream jumps. And so you basically can go up to this little sign and it go it teaches you each thing. As you leave a dream block, press jump. This will make Madeline leap out from the block while retaining her dash. And you can see there's a little uh, like you know, copy Madeline who shows you exactly what you need to do to complete this tech. This is so and cool. Da, 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 <laughs> I did it! And there we go. And so it's like, oh, I can learn to fast bubble now. I can go, which is when you enter a bubble and instead of exiting up like that, you hit the dash button right away and you go faster. And so yeah, bunny hopping, what does that entail? And so this is the beginner gym. So it teaches you all the things you need to know to complete the beginner lobby maps. And there's a bunch of them. So then it's like, okay, I'm just gonna return to the lobby and I can jump in to some maps now. And as you can see, there's there's a bunch of maps in here and they're also rated by difficulty. So you as a new Celeste player or a person new to Celeste modding can kind of find the easier maps, jump in and then work your way up to more difficult maps. And so I, I think this is just like a really amazing way for people to get into Celeste modding. And then similarly, you can jump all the way to Grandmaster if you're an experienced player and even traversing around this lobby is scary. There's a lot of, you know, there's a lot of spikes everywhere. You kind of need to know what you're doing to travel through places. But then also for me, can I even, can I even get back to where the gym is? Surely, okay. Uh, it's like, okay, let me jump into the Grandmaster gym. There are things in here that like, I've played a lot of this game that I need some more practice on, talking about chained ultras. After performing an ultra, do another ultra for more speed. And it, it goes into the specifics, you know, of what that really means. And it, it, there's a lot of, there's a lot of text here, there's a lot of information, but at the end of it, you're, you're trying to learn how to do these things. And it's like, oh shoot, I did not really chain ultra that well. But now, you know, you can give yourself some more tries at it and get better and better and prove to yourself that you can do it. And so it's like, you, you get to learn different tech and there we go. Oh, I just dashed too early there, but that was close. There we go. So there's a chain ultra, for example. And, you know, it works its way up throughout the five lobbies to teach you different things. And then those are utilized in the maps of every lobby. So I, I think it's just an amazing learning tool for anyone who wants to get better at this game. So that's that's uh, pretty much what the Spring Club is. Yeah, and yeah, I think even, cool. <laughs> even if you don't have much interest in playing the custom maps that um, you know, the Celeste community is created. I think downloading this just to play the gyms and have like a better understanding yeah. of like how to move around in the game and the different options available to you. Because um, these aren't like these gyms, they're not showcasing like modded uh, movement mechanics. These are all things that you can like implement into the base game and into just your regular Celeste speed running and playing. So I think just downloading it just to play around in the gyms and understand like the cool ways you can move around is definitely worthwhile. Yeah, I, I absolutely agree. It's just such a, and there's something there for everyone. 
which I think is so amazing. Like there's some maps that are dashless. There are some maps that, you know, really want to teach you different things. There's some puzzle maps. Like you don't have to be an expert platformer. You can just go through and have fun solving the puzzles, which, which is really, really cool. So, yeah. I, I think this is like such a, su such an amazing thing that so many people in the Celeste community put together and worked on. And now I've had so much fun. You know, C Cactus really got me into speedrunning this category and you all are gonna see like, just how cool it is. It's such a, it's such a cool speedrun. Very excited. It's, it's yeah. fantastic. It's such like, um, like a buffet of different uh, gameplay styles throughout the entire lobby. You'll see kind of going map to map, um, all made by different creators who have their own style of like, what they want to put into a level and just being able to kind of cycle through all of those. It makes for like, a very unique and very interesting run. Yeah, I absolutely agree. So awesome. Are we ready to, to jump into the to the run? Yeah, I'm always ready. Sweet. The question is, are you ready? I if absolutely so, go ahead and give us a countdown, Court. Woo! Let's do it. We're gonna get started in three, two, one, and go. Good luck, good luck. Yeah. So first we gotta speed through the prologue here. Basically, just kind of have a little bit of an introduction to what the lobby is. There's some credits. Uh, the good thing about this prologue is we can dash, unlike the Celeste prologue, so it goes a bit faster. But the music in this pack is also really incredible. Shoutouts to all of the musicians who worked on it throughout the Celeste community. And then we jump right on into the beginner lobby. And uh, I don't know the exact number. Cactus might know the number of how many maps there are, but there's a lot. And they each have their own kind of flavor of what we're going to be doing. So first we're jumping into Heavenly Altitudes, which for many people was the first map they kind of played in the lobby. Got a lot of battle and movement here where you're just kind of getting from battle and orb to battle and orb. Yeah, so there are, I believe, 18 different maps and then the heart side at the end of cool. the lobby. And we'll get into that later. But yeah. There's some fun skips too, kind of going through the dream block there in a way that wasn't really intended. So even though this is like a beginner, you know, a, the beginner lobby, we can use advanced tech, of course, to make this go as fast as possible, which is why like it's it's a really incredible run to learn as someone who's done a lot of vanilla Celeste speedrunning. I can use what I've learned like, oh, I missed that demo, but it's OK. <laughs> I caught it at the last second. <laughs> Um, you can use tech I've learned from other places to go fast here. Yeah, and something we're going to see some more of in just a second is, as well as being timed as uh, sort of doing each of these individual uh, little levels, um, the time is also going to be running when we're in sort of the main hub world and getting from one yes. level to another. So that's another element that we're really going to see here is um, the routing of what order do we want to do these levels in. Um, so Frozen is going to be taking a very fast path uh, through them and kind of going through the nearest levels, um, like just doing a bit of a loop around the map and hitting all the levels as she passes them, basically. Yeah, lobby movement is like really fun. Oh, I didn't hit this button. Lobby, lobby movement is definitely something that makes this unique in terms of like instead, I've run other Celeste mods that are campaigns and they work kind of like, you know, the vanilla game, you just go from level to level, but here you literally have to like work on traversing, which is which is really cool. So I want to talk a little bit about what, what Crystal Enigma is. <laughs> uh, yeah, so this is uh, Crystal Enigma. There's a puzzle map where you have to uh, carry a Theo crystal around throughout. Um, sort of the main um, puzzle solving element at the start of this map is a very strange interaction that we oh, get between um, buttons and doors. So you'll see there's like plenty of doors and also plenty of buttons here. And the way that they interact in Celeste is buttons don't tend to be hard coded to open a certain door. They will look for the nearest closed door to them and open that mm -hmm. door. So there's a puzzle solving element here where Frozen is going to have to press these buttons in the right order to be able to unlock all of those doors. Like you see, she had to press those buttons in the middle to open the middle doors to be able to um, make it so that by the time she hit the last button, the only door left was the one at the exit. And so it yeah. hit that one. This is a very famous room, this coin room. Uh, when I played this casually, I was, I was perplexed for a long time. Very satisfying in the speed run to just know how to complete it optimally. This is another one where we just kind of fly through this room and it's really fun. 
Oh yeah, so like that room we just saw there, it's kind of like a, a moving maze where you hit the coins and the walls and the floor kind of like shift around. You need to kind of get yourself to the end and then rescue yes. Theo afterwards without locking either of you in the yeah. corner. But yeah. That's a very fun one to That's, learn. Just to further, this, this is beginner. This is beginner. This is beginner. Okay. I'm yeah. using advanced tech. So all of these yeah, maps. Yeah, this looks hard. Really yeah, hard. All of these maps are absolutely completable by beginners. Uh, the stuff I'm doing is not beginner. <laughs> but I'm getting, you know, I'm using whatever speed tech I have available to me. But they are all completable, you know, with just the tech that they teach you. It looks intimidating as a speedrun for sure. Uh, but this is not how I played this casually. So this is one of the three dashless maps we have in the beginner lobby. So not able to dash. And it also has this like amazing silhouette look. I really love this level. I think it's super fun. So I'm gonna take it uh, death here because the coin persists, which means that even though I died, it counts as if I have uh, collected the coin. So it's an intentional death warp there. This level is really cool. The music's banging, big fan. Yeah, this is great got as a well. question of yeah. if we could use the assist mode on custom maps. You can. You can use the assist mode on every single mod you want to. So absolutely. You'll just, in your file that you're using to play the collab, you will just hit the assist mode and you can use whichever options you want, which is like another thing. So like when I was first playing Monica's D-Sides, which are, you know, a very well-made but very difficult pack, I turned on infinite stamina because I'm just not that good at stamina management. And it worked out great for me. I really was glad I was able to do that option. Uh, and um, one of the mods that the Spring Collab utilizes is uh, the Extended Variance mod, which adds like a whole additional layer of like custom customization that we can have going on here. Yep. So, for example, in like the Vanilla Assist mode, as we saw before, you can have one, two, or infinite dashes. But with Extended Variance, you could say give yourself three dashes if you still wanted to have a bit more of a challenge than infinite. But mm -hmm. like two dashes for Summit was proving a bit too challenging, for example. Yep. Which is really really cool. I love this part. You just gotta kind of like boop a boop in between these stars. <laughs> Very fun. Yeah, these um, maps are so enjoyable. They're fantastic. I think um, all of these maps are like incredibly creative and really fantastic. I think yeah. it's um, an especially uh, difficult talent to be able to create like fun dashless maps as well because you're. Um, you're really like limiting yourself in like how the player can traverse around the level. So to still yeah. like give them like such a fun and challenging experience is incredibly impressive, I think. I agree. So if someone wanted to get into this, um, how would you go about like getting this, you know, these custom maps? Is it something that's easily obtainable? Anything fancy you have to do? Yeah, so the mod loader is called Everest. We also have like a thing called Olympus that helps you manage what mods you're doing and search for mods and download them. If you have Celeste on PC, you can play all these mods and you literally can just like Google Celeste Spring Collab. It'll totally show up. Very, very easy to find and download. Also, everyone in Celeste Discord, the, the Celeste Discord would be happy to help you set it up if you're having any troubles. But in terms of like learning the speedrun, you just kind of, what I did is I just you know, downloaded it and started learning them level by level. And it's it's been a really fun, rewarding experience. Watching other people's runs, taking their strats, figuring out what strats work for me. It's it's a great time. Yeah, and once you've beat these levels, um, you get um, the, the silver berry, the deathless berry, which is the equivalent of like the vanilla game's golden berries. But the Sprinkle Lab also has, um, they're called speed berries and mm -hmm. you Pick that berry up and it gives you like a bronze, silver and gold part time to complete the level in. So I found that like one of the most fun ways for me to grind this was to like go for all of the uh, like speed berry times in the different levels as yeah. like a way of learning and using that as like a measure of oh like okay which are my weaker levels and which ones do I want to put more time into practicing and stuff. Yeah that's been an amazing learning tool is like okay let me go for the silver speed berry and I recognize, oh, this one's taking me a bit longer. Let me sit down and study some more strats. Uh, and then some of them I get and I'm like, okay, I guess I don't need as much practice on that one. The, the speed berries have been really useful as a learning tool. Absolutely agree. Oh, I forgot to dash again, that's fine. Yeah, but um, no, Everest is like a really fantastic tool for installing mods. Um, it's it, yeah. like the quality of life stuff going on there is absolutely fantastic. So 
the Sprinkle app, I think it has um, maybe like nine or ten other mods that it depends on to be able to uh, function properly. But if you just install the Sprinkle app and then boot up Everest, it'll just say, oh, you're, you're trying to play the Sprinkle app, but you need to download these ten other mods. No worries, I'll just download them now. I'll and just you do don't that even for need to you. Go and look for them. Yeah. yeah, that's right. How nice. We got this cool skip over here. We're just going to demo through some spikes. I promise I don't have uh, invincibility on. The hitbox How is precise easy. are those dashes through the spikes? That one's really not that precise. It's not bad. Some of it them is, are really rough. <laughs> it is pixel perfect, but I believe because it comes at the apex of your jump, you're at that pixel for about four frames. So it's around about a four frame window. Oh, I missed that. Good thing there's a checkpoint here. The big thing about beginner lobby is checkpoints are really, really lenient. That's a, another great thing about this lobby is they want you to succeed. There's a lot of checkpoints everywhere, which is really nice. Oh, I got stuck in that little nook. Nice. You could save with your neutral jump. Yeah, I was like, oh, I got a just neutral here. <laughs> yeah. I love Azurite's really fun. Very great map. And yeah, same with the map we're about to do. This one's very fun. Yeah, um, so um, you can see as well, uh, Frozen was mentioning earlier, so like the whole beginner, intermediate, advanced, expert, grandmaster, um, they're basically um, kind of showing you what tech is required to do the levels. And then within those lobbies, we have this like traffic light system of uh, green, amber and red, which are an indicator of how difficult uh, within kind of the constraints of only needing beginner tech the level is. So yeah. this level and the Theo Crystal level earlier, two of like the red traffic light levels. So you'll see even though they're not technically super demanding in terms of like difficult things the game is asking you to do, because the platforming is pretty intense and pretty difficult, they're like at like the upper end of difficulty for a beginner. Yeah, which I think is really helpful because you can kind of start your way at beginner green, then go to beginner yellow you know, as you're learning things, which is great. Because this uses jellyfish, which are something that are only really seen in Farewell. So if you're not super familiar with Farewell, this could be a more difficult map for you. But it's also a really great learning map for jellyfish, I think. Yeah, absolutely. I think the style of gameplay here is uh, very reminiscent of uh, Recon, the yeah. subchapter towards the end of Farewell, where you're sort of just being thrown around by the bird and battling and kind of jump in from platform. It's very platform. fun, yeah. That was a nice. here. That was, yeah, that was like really, really clean. clean for me. Yeah. Now we're going to go to Blast Processing. Let's go. Let's go. Oh, is, is it? Oh, it is. <laughs> this is another a funny puzzle one. map. This is, at the minute, I think my favorite map in the beginner lobby. It's, it's really so fun. So interesting <laughs> and really fun. So the main mechanic here is you'll see we've got these um, the traffic blocks um, and they're color coded. So when you press the one blue, it's also going to scroll the other blue, and you use that to solve these like light puzzles that are happening in the background that will be opening the, uh, different gates for us. I just stood on some electricity. Don't worry about it. Oh, I didn't stand on that long enough. That's okay. This map's really really fun to speed run. It is a really great beginner puzzle map too, and I think it's a it's a good entryway to these colored zip movers that you see in a lot of custom maps nowadays. Yeah, I think this is definitely one of the first maps I played where the game really challenged me to kind of think outside the box and yep. really play Celeste. Totally unlike any way that I had to play it before this point. I agree. It's super fun. And like, you know, I'm doing a lot of speed tech to get through this, but n none of that is required. You can just jump, you know, jump and dash, take your way through here. I'm just going zoomy. Yeah, and uh, fun. I think before oh. you were you asking like, oh, is this like really a beginner map when uh, Frozen was playing in the Theo Crystal level? And though it is a beginner map because it's not asking that much difficult tech, um, like some players might find that like a green map in the intermediate lobby is a bit easier than that. It's just only in the intermediate lobby because it's asking the player to do wave dashes, whereas the beginner lobby yep. doesn't, for example. Hmm. Yeah, it's more it's more tech divided than like either cognitive difficulty for a puzzle map or, you know, yeah, like tightness. It's, it's more divided by like what tech it's asking you to do. We're going into yeah. some two two really fun maps coming up. That have to do with Dream Blocks. I have the Singularity and then uh, Dream Block or something Space Jam. Dream Block Space Jam. I don't know. 
Yeah. Space Ram Freever Dream. There it is. That's the one. <laughs> That's a fun name. So we've got these like little square dream blocks. They're super cute. This is a fun one. Pretty short map. Funny skip here. Uh, whoops, I was too yeah. far. We don't need to interact with this room with a well-timed hyper. We we don't we don't need to do that room at all. <laughs> Big fan of that. Oops, I meant to control there. there we go. And some of these maps, you know, you can tell have like vanilla music. Some of them have custom music. There's another big collab mod coming out called Strawberry Jam that is going to be made with a kind of similar structure to this that I'm super excited for. I've been an intermediate captain for it. Can't wait for more stuff like this to come out. It just kind of brings the community together. Yeah, I'm super looking GG. forward to that. It's EG singularity. Yeah. yeah, that's a fun map. This one's really fun too. There are like, there are two paths here in this level and the alternate path you have to use demo dashes to get to which is not a beginner tech by any means and therefore there's like this more difficult but much faster way so i'm gonna hopefully get through these demos with not yeah. too much difficulty okay that was not bad nice <laughs> Yeah, um, you did get the second one first try, but there is some lenient checkpointing there and that you do get a checkpoint in between those two demos, which is quite nice because, as we've seen, they're very precise. They're kind of tricky to get. Um, yeah. So that's, you know, it's some nice checkpointing to make it a bit more fun and less frustrating to get through. This map's really cool because you basically get to, like, change your direction with the dash crystals in the dream blocks. And you can also, like, give yourself a speed boost if you get, if you do a dash crystal in the same direction. So those are two pieces of tech that this alternate path is kind of teaching you. Yeah, and uh, this screen that we're in right now is absolutely not beginner difficulty. Um, the, like no. the remainder of this map, if Frozen had gone through the other way, it is much less quick, which is why she hasn't done it, but it's also very much accessible to beginners. I feel like the gameplay we see in that screen is probably a lot closer to what you'd expect to see in like an advanced map, in my opinion. Yeah, I agree with that. It's a lot tighter. Oops, I meant to go up here. <laughs> Lobby traversal is really, really fun, but also can sometimes be tricky, <laughs> as you can see. Yeah. This area looks great. Oh. Yeah, so this, is, storm. this is in the storm, <laughs> which is a very... Um, it's like a cool short and sweet map where you have these kind it. of like tight movement screens where you just kind of bounce in between um, springs, bubbles, and uh, like the conveyor belt walls to just sort of climb up. Yeah, I, I think the beginner lobby is just like really fun because there's some like maps that use, you know, some new mechanics, some chocolate stuff, but then there's some that are just like just really fun gameplay. This is, this is definitely an example of one that just has some nice Celeste gameplay. Yeah, like the uh, the challenges um, that are put on the player in this map are stuff you could absolutely expect to just see in any of the vanilla levels in Celeste. Yeah, uh, I absolutely agree with that. Uh, that was incredible. That was really fast. Yeah, that was GGs. good. That was, that that was a, nice a goal one. for me. <laughs> that was nice. It's really clean. Yeah, Battle and Block Belt. This is an interesting one. I really, really enjoyed this casually. Uh, unfortunately, there are not a lot of good entry cycles in the speed run, so sometimes it can be a little challenging <laughs> to go fast yeah. here. Yeah, there's so many, this one for example here, so many cycles where it really feels like you should make it, but actually getting that cycle, I believe it is possible, but it's very, very difficult. It's horrible. Um, yeah. <laughs> um, so. yeah, sort of like, um, you know, the gold speed very time and like the beginner lobby, the world record run, don't even go for that cycle skip. It's that sort yeah, of Yeah, so you're just like, oh man, that's rough. Mm -hmm. Oops, and sometimes get owned by momentum on some of these blocks as well. Yeah. Um, this is a really fun map. I actually like spent it quite is. a lot of time uh, practicing this map this morning, actually. So it's one that's definitely very fresh in my brain right now. Mm -hmm. it's a cool map. <laughs> yeah. So, are all these maps designed by like different people? Is this yep. done by one person? No. Most of these Even maps. It's the collab of name of everything, right? So. Yeah. So there are some people who are mappers. There are some people who are decorators. Some people who are musicians. Uh, there are some people who were like captains who oversaw the maps overall but the majority of these maps are made by different people. There are some people who made multiple, but it's a kind of collection of a bunch of different mappers, which is like so cool. And everyone's style is different. Yeah. That's like, what makes it like really fun. 
yeah, like there's such a huge diversity in these maps that um, there's definitely going to be one of them that you really enjoy if you play all 18 yes. of these levels, I think. completely agree. Yeah. Here we are in Mossy Caverns. Wanna 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 talk about Mossy? What makes this one special? Yeah, so this is another dashless map, um, with the main gimmick being that we're underwater for a lot of it. And unlike in the vanilla game, uh, Madeline actually has um like a system where she can run out of breath, kind of like stamina. And if you do catch yourself running out of breath, then you take a death and you're back to the start of the screen. So we can replenish breath either by coming up out of the water or you'll see there's these glowing water bubbles which sort of feel a bit like getting a dash crystal um, yeah. in the main game. But yeah, you go into that water bubble and it resets your breath. Um, but as you can see, we have like the kind of out of stamina red flash that you know when you'd really need to get some air soon. So this level is, because there's no dashing, again, it's hard to really zoom through it. So it's a lot of just um, kind of like being confident in your movement and confident in your mm -hmm. strats and taking good lines in between the bubbles so you get to them quickly enough. Yeah, here's yeah. one of the... Oh, I might die. Ooh. Yep. That's unfortunate. I So that's an example of where I was just... I second-guessed what I was doing. But there is a... There's a oh, but it works out that yeah. there's a, I actually get the key here. So that's fine. I'm just going to go this way instead. Because that coin was <laughs> persistent, so we were totally fine there. Yeah, um, but yeah, there is a death warp you can do there where if you jump out of the top of the room and then take that death, then you'll respawn with the key right next to that gate. Yeah. Um, but yeah, this um, this map's really cool. And um, in the next couple of screens as well, uh, we're going to see um, just a couple of like very like interesting looking skips. So you see there's like yeah. a water jet that's supposed to stop you from getting that coin. But if you come <laughs> at it from a little bit further away, you can build up enough speed so that you hit the coin yep. before it pushes you back. And it saves a little bit of time here, but we're going to see in the next room it save a lot of time. Um, yes, there's a huge <laughs> skip, which is very, very nice, because otherwise this 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 is a pretty fun one, but it is, it's quite lengthy in terms of the speed run. Yeah, I think this is... Um, outside of the heart side, the longest map in the beginner I think lobby, that's true. I do believe. Yeah. Um, and it's pretty similar level to the heart side, like they're very similar lengths to each other just because of how restricted you are to going speedy, not having access to that dash. Yeah, we so here, here we're going to grab this bubble, which we're not supposed to do. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and and we're supposed to do several loops around there, turning the jets off and on, getting access to the bubbles um, to be able to get those keys. Nah. Instead, we can <laughs> not interact with any of those jet switches, uh, go straight for that second key and exit the level, and it saves. I didn't actually time it because I just never bothered learned to learn the normal way to do this room. <laughs> yeah, um, that's one of those things you learn right away when you're learning this run. Cause it, it, I mean, yeah. I even did it uh, not my first playthrough, but my second, because I was just like, you know what? I know that the skip exists. I don't need to do this. <laughs> Great. Yeah. Well done. Nice. This is a really clean right. Marcy. Yeah, that was pretty good. Now I we're believe. heading to my favorite map in this beginner lobby for sure. Uh, Freaking love this level. <laughs> it's so cool. This is another one of the. Uh, the red traffic light levels as well. So you'll see, yes. even though no tech is required, uh, this level is going to look uh, quite a bit more demanding than some of the other ones. And I think that applies both casually and also from the point of view of the speedrun, is this is definitely one of the more challenging maps in the beginning. It lobby. is. But in a way There's a lot that of is, cycles. Yeah, it's very cycle based. But also, like the music in this, the aesthetic in this, it's, it's so much fun. Yeah, it's challenging in like a very, very good way. Like it doesn't feel frustrating at all. It's just, I think especially like, you know, kind of like, it's the kind of things the speedrun is like, you know, it's just lots of like tight, like technical movement and um, trying to make the fastest cycle. Um, yeah. It's a lot of fun. Oh, I, oh no. that's sad. That's okay. So yeah. there's, a, there's a kind of like a cycle skip you can do there to take the double dash crystal. Um, and you don't have to wait for the platform, but I was a bit off and yeah. got hit by the spikies, so that's okay. So you can squeeze what right up near the spikes and get one extra bounce from the game that thinks you should from that, and then that would let you like exit out of the top. The music in this just is so good, and the, I love the decoration. It's really fun. <laughs> yeah, this is a really sweet level.
this this screen is really challenging to do optimally so i kind of try, try and survive yeah <laughs> for I, a lot of this i always fall victim of trying to be really greedy on this screen and yes. to like run ahead to the springs that are in front of me rather than just deciding to wait a second it gets and you get this behind <laughs> me and i end up dying and i'm gonna do the whole yeah. thing again and it's yeah i think definitely just a bit of patience and accepting that like you might lose a bit of time to a couple of cycles and that room is the way to go yep that nice. went pretty well yeah the screen is funny it's really funny we have this like um wave of spikes sort of coming back and forth and we did um <laughs> maneuver around those to go get the coin and then get the key open the door and then go right to the end nice is it? Yeah, that, went, that was that went well Very for me. Very speedy, sir. So. Circus Especially hard. For, yeah, and that is all three of the um, like the red difficulty maps out of the way now with that one in the lobby, yep. which is definitely a good feeling. Yeah, really, really nice. This map this is, is really cool funny. <laughs> so the smuggle a dash there. Yeah. Which is not intended. So this map has the core mechanic of your dash not being refilled when you're on the ground. So Frozen managed to get an extra dash there by starting the dash before she moved screens and jumping into that dream block without having to use one of her dashes for that screen, which lets you skip like pretty much the whole level. And that's a recurring theme of this, is just being really careful about where you spend your dashes to avoid having to go get crystals. And this room just doesn't exist. Yep, we just thanks, kind thanks of take a little level. jump there <laughs> and uh, goodbye. Yeah, and that's wow. that level done in about wow. 30 seconds. <laughs> it's great. Breaking that is so fun. Absolutely. Definitely one of the most like satisfying and fun skips to learn in the uh, entire beginner lobby run. Yep. Absolutely agree. Mm. We're moving into Seeker Temple, which is, yeah. you know, if you played Celeste before, it's kind of just like, it's like a little mirror temple-esque. It's pretty cute. Yeah, it's definitely another one of those maps that really feels like it's more on like the vanilla side of things. Yep. Like these are all screens that would fit right at home within the Temple B-side level, I think. Um, it's just yeah, a lot of like dashing around, avoiding the seekers. Um, a lot of fun. And this one you can't dash because if you dash, that seeker will die, and yeah. you need it to break this wall, <laughs> which I think is like a really cool, cool it's, puzzle. Yeah, it's a really interesting way to kind of like force a dashless section in a map that gives you a dash, and it's like really fantastic use of like camera triggers from the mapper there, so that as soon as you're in that room. The seeker under the dash block is in view, and you know right away mm -hmm. when I compress my dash button. Or what will often happen is you will dash straight into the room, and the first thing you see is that seeker dying, and then realizing, yeah, it's really okay, funny. I guess I can't. You're like, ah, oh, got button. it. <laughs> Gonna warp here because once you have a key and you take a death, you still keep the key, but we respawn. So save us some time. Oh, these hearts love to troll me. I try and dash into them, and then I die. <laughs> All right, now we're going to a fan favorite level, Temple oh, of the so Kevins. Cool. Yeah. If you weren't here for our explanation earlier of what Kevins are, uh, they're the things you dash into, named after the sound designer Kevin. And this level's really funny. Yeah, the music here is really great as well. We kind of have like these like Kevin noises like worked <laughs> into the bass. Uh, it's really cool. It is. Oh, we don't even use that Kevin though. Oh. Yeah, I screwed up the dash. Oh, if you do, you have to do an extended super, and I'm missing the extension. Yeah. You gotta get go. like a lot of coyote frames to make sure that you make it far enough as well. It's a really tricky yep. one. <laughs> yep. <That's> exactly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the, There's the a music funny skip here. Is such a banger in this one. It yeah. is so funny. <laughs> so so I'm gonna line up this dash. And we just skip rooms, whoops. Yeah, there's two rooms that are joined diagonally there and you can do that kind of like funny cheese to just totally skip like the proper way of getting into that room and get up through like a screen transition that's not super supposed to be there, but it's like just above those spikes. Yep, so I, I do a little like pixel lineup to, to make that work. Here you get to do a chained ultra, which is hilarious. Yeah, it's that Grandmaster tech that we were seeing before. And it's, <laughs> it's, it's really, really cool, cool. that because that's obviously like an intentional chained ultra that's been put in there. So yep. even though it's it's a beginner map, like the designer of this map has been like, well, I'm going to give the player the option to use all this advanced tech in really creative ways if they want to, even though they definitely don't need to. Yeah, that's what makes speedrunning this really fun is that like, you know, I obviously know more tech than a normal beginner player. 
so it's really engaging to learn the speed run because I get to kind of use everything at my arsenal. And that was a really nice yeah. Kevin. That was, that was very good. That was a really yeah, good happy. Kevin's. Nice. I'm super happy with that. And now we're going to Desolate Spire, which is an amazing example of like a new mechanic that's built really well and is taught well to the player. So we are going to have jump crystals. Oh, this is so much fun. You get to just jump again. And so these the little red dots over my head tell you that I have an extra jump. And it feels so natural to Celeste gameplay. It's it's just amazing. Yeah, the mid-air jumps is uh, definitely up there as like one of my favorite custom mechanics. Um, it really does just gel so well with the vanilla yeah. stuff that Celeste has going on. And it, they feel super smooth to use. Like they're great. Oop, I went a little too high there. So there's a, there's a little skip you can do here. Yeah, so that's using, I guess, extended hyper to keep, keep a hold of that dash. And what we saw there was uh, Frozen doing a super in the air. So that's yeah. an interesting thing you can do with these is um, you can like do your dash and then you can jump in the air. So it's as if you're doing a hyper or a super off the ground because uh, you got access to that. It's really cool. Yeah. And of course, the, the aesthetic end of this map is just beautiful too. This is another like really stellar map in the beginner lobby, fan favorite for sure. Oh, I just missed that yeah. last jump. This is this screen right here is one of my favorite things. It, I said this before. It feels like a rhythm game, like when you're alternating yes. between like when to jump, when to dash to climb all the way out. It's really neat. Absolutely feels that way. I completely agree. You even got the DDR arrows, so yeah. Yeah. Yes, exactly. <laughs> Here we can just farm a lot of jumps to get all the way. Really fun. <laughs> You can sit there and just wait for those to refresh and like gather an absurd number of jumps as they keep. You can. Respawning. It's you really fun. It's very funny. <laughs> All right, and the final boss of the beginner lobby is a map called Chill Out Mountain. Uh, yeah. This is another dashless one, mm -hmm. and yeah. Yeah, the music and the vibe boss. is very chill out. The gameplay, however, the is gameplay quite stressful. is stressful. <laughs> This is like yeah. such an intense ending to the beginner lobby speedrun. Yeah. It's a lot harder than it looks to go fast here. And because of how kind of tucked away in the lobby it is, there's not really like a reasonable way to not route this level right at the very end of the run. So yeah. you're gonna have this quite long punishing dashless map at the end and you really want to make sure that, you know, you're comfortable with it. It is a very scary yeah. time. It is. This, yeah. It's a very cool map. Um, it's like it is quite difficult, though. I would think because like you have to worry about all of these spikes. Uh, you don't have your dash, which means that if you like send yourself on like a stressful trajectory with a jump, you can't avoid the spikes by dashing away from them. And then you also have to worry about these snowball cycles as well, which are coming at Madeline's Y position on a regular interval. So on this screen, while you're climbing up, we'll just kind of be going over them, and they're not too much of a stress. But during the long horizontal bits, uh, they can be quite troublesome. Yeah, okay. it's the it's the horizontal parts that are terrifying. Like as you can see there, and that one, you always got to jump there. You always have to jump there because if you don't, you're gonna get owned. Once you get like a certain closeness to the end of the screen, this stops spawning, and I like wasn't sure if you were gonna be far enough I to wasn't not either. have to deal with that snowball. But yeah, or sometimes what happens is you think it's going to come, so you press jump, but it's coming later than you think, and it yeah. spawns at the height you jumped to, it's and then so you die sad. before doing the jump. <laughs> okay, okay, we're good. That was good. That was such a speedy chill out. That was actually really good. <laughs> Holy moly. I think I saved so like 20 fast. seconds on my PB there. <laughs> All right, so now yeah. that, that was really good. We're going to the heart wow. side. So yeah. the heart side is you, you all are in for a treat. It's a culmination of every single map we've seen. Yeah, this is so cool. Um, and yeah, I think having just seen all of the maps in real time one after another, being able to kind of spot the different influences in the hard side here is a really fun thing, definitely. It's really, really fun. So we're gonna do that. Yeah. So you, you literally get to see every map we've done so far. Okay, I just missed that. That's fine. So it has like um, flags, a bit like you see in Summit, to kind of like, you know, how far away you are from the end. This is flag seven, and you'll see there's like a little bit from like the Battle and Block Belt, and then we go into Azurite Ascent, and then out of there, um, we go to the right into End of the Storm. And this is the style of gameplay that we're going to be seeing in the entire Heart Side. You know, it's kind of like 
one challenge or two challenges from yep. each of the maps, but in quick succession. And then a few different maps will make up a screen. And I think they've done an absolutely fantastic job of pairing up kind of which screens come after which screens to make it feel yep. really fluid. It flows amazingly. Yeah. It's definitely stressful in the speedrun because like, you know, there's not a lot of checkpoints. You gotta be really confident in what you're doing, but it is really like really rewarding as well. Oh, definitely. Yeah, this is a very, very fun map. Even like, I think it feels like a very appropriate final challenge for your casual yes. playthrough after you've conquered all of the beginner maps. It's almost like it's kind of testing you on like the, um, you know, the different kind of techniques that you've learned in each of the maps yep. and seeing if you can remember what gameplay elements did I like need to rely on to get through these maps is a lot of fun. Exactly. Totally agree. It's really, really fun. Yeah. Here we are in thoughtful dreams. Yeah. Nice. Ooh. Flag four is a very And now the yeah. dashless flag. <laughs> this is the hardest flag in the whole thing yeah. for me. It's scary. So we have three dashless maps in this lobby, and the very, very like good level design point here is to put them all on one flag. So you saw we had mossy mossy caverns, the underwater level, then the silhouette level. And now we're back in Chillout Mountain, which is the one we just saw. So like all the dashless which gameplay rolled into one really helps you get like into the Ooh. dashless mindset there. Yep. That luckily went pretty well. Yeah. So now this flag is just Crystal Enigma, which is hilarious. But like thank goodness at the same time, because like puzzle moment. Yeah, so it's just this like little screen where we gotta get this key using <laughs> feel, and that takes us into flag two. Here we have a really fun demo. Just kind of go through here. Yeah. And then into the blast processing challenge. I think this and is we're like... we're just gonna fly into this. This one's so good. Nice. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, blast processing is so, so much freaking fun. I, I can't recommend it enough, like seriously. But what is blast processing? <laughs> <laughs> Nice. I always grab onto these just to make sure. Yeah, with screens this long, you definitely want to, um, I think a lot of players are definitely happy to take the split second time loss for safety to make sure you don't lose like 10 plus seconds to a death. Yeah, you really don't want to die on these screens. So I, yeah. I definitely take star jump a little bit slower. Oh, oh my God. <laughs> I did not like that. <laughs> Nice, and we've made it hey, through flag fine. one, and we're in the final screen now. Um, oh my gosh, please. <laughs> and nice. that is a, like, 40-second PB from me. 34 <laughs> Huge. Woo! Yeah, it's fantastic. My previous PB was a 35 <laughs> flat that I got on Thursday. That's a, that's a GDQ PB. Yeah. Ah! <laughs> you know, I, I can't believe this. This should be illegal, P being in two different runs back to back, yeah. live on stage. <laughs> what the heck, Corey? You're too good. Oh my gosh, I cannot believe So yeah, the other day, I was my goal for this category was to get under a 35. And on stream, I literally got a 35.00.3. And I was hard. And just to be clear, like, huh? we were talking about in-game time. That's on the yes, bottom left of the yeah, screen. Yeah, in-game yep. in time. Uh, I, I have my live spurt rolling. And so I got it. I'm so happy. <laughs> nice. Congratulations. I didn't, to, I didn't want to say anything uh, to like not jinx it, but after, know, you got the, right? after you got the 35 flat when I was watching you run this on Thursday night, I was thinking it's like the perfect storyline to just get the sub 35 <laughs> in the marathon <laughs> on GDQ. It's going to be good, yeah. Uh, yeah, and uh, I'm, I'm super excited because I'm going to be submitting this to uh, Flame Fatals as well. I'm probably just going to submit this video, honestly. Like that commentary was hey, really there you great. Go. <laughs> Thank you so much, Cactus and, and Fant for... You know, talking through that with me. It's always really, it's easier for me to play well when I'm talking with people. So I appreciate the conversations. And I hope, I hope everyone here like enjoyed getting to see some modded speedruns. And like, if you're interested in playing this, I highly, highly recommend it. It's an amazing mod, so accessible, and it's just such a fun time. Yeah, I think before we have you go, you want to give us like one uh, additional refresher how we can play this? Yeah, absolutely. So if you just like literally Google like Celeste, Everest, 
it'll it'll pop up. There's an installer, and you can like then you can just be free and download all the mods that you want. Uh, but yeah, you can you know just spring collab uh, on Game Banana. It'll show up. You download this. It'll give you all the things that you need, and you can just basically jump right in. Uh, it's it's yeah. amazing. And so. if you and if you get Olympus, which is like the Everest. Um, assistant app kind of i don't really know how better to describe it uh on olympus you actually there's like a web browser in there where you can browse game banana and you can one click install to celeste mods just from browsing yeah. them online through that it's so simple it's great it is it is so so easy to do and there are there's just so many amazing mods out there as well i highly recommend just like jumping in and and checking them out there it's it's so much fun yeah, it's, awesome, it's great awesome. Time. Well, from the Flygon, thank you so, so much for uh, coming on and showcasing this and going over all the different accessibility features. Like, this is a really, really good showcase. And congratulations again on back to back PVs. Yeah, nice. <laughs> really incredible stuff. And Cactus, wonderful commentary. And uh, I hope you. to see more from you in the future, maybe at a future, you know event of some sort. I don't know. I don't know. I'm not going to say anything. Um, <laughs> but, you know, that's going to be it for Celeste. Again, I want you all to be sure to go check out Frozen Flygon. She is not only a wonderful Celeste speedrunner, but does a whole bunch of Super Mario World hacks as well, and runs a wonderful hotfix show called It's Dangerous yes. to Go Alone, a, a show all about co-op runs. And, you know, the, it's always just, it's always great to, you know, have somebody to go through a challenging thing with. And yeah, so again, yeah. thank you so 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 much for for thank coming on. Thank you so on. much and for for, <laughs> for having me. Um, if 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 anyone's here interested, it doesn't know me or doesn't know my stream, I would love for you to come by. I speed run a lot of Celeste and Kaizo, as you were saying. So twitch.tv slash Frozen Flygon, or you can follow me also on Twitter. There, I talk about my schedules and what I'm doing with the uh, Frame Fatals as well, because mm -hmm, I mm -hmm. really am super involved with that. And submissions for that are coming up in two days. So, oh, I need, if, you I need any, to go prepare. if you have any questions about that, <laughs> let me know. <laughs> All righty. Get um, ready. So, we are not done yet. There is one more run uh, that's going to be coming up after a break. That's going to be Ratchet and Clank, Ripped Apart, All Bolts, run by B-Dud. So, don't go anywhere. Take five, and we'll see you all soon.